If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach. I'm here as always on Mondays, on our awakening days, our mystical Mondays, uh, to talk with Joshua Radawan, also a spiritual coach and a, a specialist in working with people in the paranormal. So I want to talk today about, can I finally understand what my cat is saying? Spoiler alert, alert it's probably about food. <laughs> Which is not bad. I love that. You know what's so funny is that Josh comes up with these these titles, and uh, you know I I read them and I just like I can't drink my coffee when I'm re reading them because I spit take everywhere. Cause it, <laughs> he just makes me laugh so hard. But here here's the funny thing. So we had a listener write in and ask us for a couple of episodes, and that was Weiwei. And we mentioned this in the last episode for Mondays. And today's episode is the second one that they wrote in about. And the funny thing is, is that these two episodes were actually already on the, the, the schedule. And so this is how spirituality works, right? These were already on the schedule in this order at this time when this request came through. And so Josh is like, you know, I, I forwarded the email and said, hey, could you put these on the schedule? And he came back and went, they already are. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, that's awesome. Right. Because he tapped into the gestalt of where the podcast was going. And he pulled these things out because that's exactly what we needed at the time. And, you know, this shows that he's he's a great seer because this is how it got scheduled. And, uh, and so, you know, when you. That's Same also here. why I, you know, like we're, we're getting to the time where we're done, you know, with some of the scheduled ones. And I'm, I've been waiting to feel the energy of the collective of the listeners before I, I make my next move. You know, I'm kind of seeing all the threads come in of, okay, what, what do people want? And I'm glad to, it's always nice to have confirmation that what you're seeing <laughs> is what people want. So, you know, I'm excited. So keep sending your energy folks. Let us know whether it's in the ethereal or, you know, we also just like an email. Sometimes that's easier to decipher. <laughs> Go figure. Yep. Kelly at kellysparta.com will get you the, the, uh, get, get to us, right? And we will take that into consideration as we put our, our schedule together going forward. We, we love hearing from you guys. So please, please, please send in your ideas and your requests and your questions. Or you can just record it on voice at ask or at spiritguidespodcast.com and just hit the ask a question button. And that'll get you the ability to just record it if you would prefer to do that than rather than write an email. So either way works. We love to hear from you. And and you know, if you record it, we can actually put your voice on the air and then say, Hey, listen to this, right? Okay. Anyway, and while we're at it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share because that's the best way to support our podcast is to help us get known to your friends and family. And if you don't have anybody specific you would share it to, just, you know, throw it up on social media and say, hey, check these people out, you know, or put it in a Reddit thread that's relevant or whatever. Start, you know, tell nice people, tell, tell people nice things about us. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about animal communication is effectively what this is. And, you know, Josh is talking about a cat in his title, I have a dog, so we'll, I'll probably be referencing my dog. But, you know, there's a lot of ways that animal communication can come into play, right? And it's not just with your pets. So, you know, I mean, Kathy Shiron, who was on the podcast the other day talking about the, the elements and who has done episodes on family constellation work with me before and things like that. Um, she actually had an experience where she was out in the desert and she had a bunch of friends around her and she was in a trance state and a rattlesnake came up to her and like raised up like it was going to bite her and the friends were panicked. They were like, oh my God, she's going to die, right? And they're like, do we have snake bite kit? Do we have da 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 And she was actually just having a conversation with the snake and she and the snake were in communion and then the snake, you know, which had been rattling, the snake turned around and just went away when she was done with the conversation. And she was never once scared 
because she was just having a conversation and they were freaking out. So, you know, animal communication be super helpful for that, right? I, you know, and, it's, it's, you know, it, yeah, it's funny ahead. you say that. I had a very similar experience last year. Granted, I want, I want to give you all props, Kathy, if you are listening to this. It wasn't a rattlesnake by any means. It was a garter snake. <laughs> but I was at my family's cottage, uh, the place I just spent a couple weeks, and snakes swam right up. And it's just, I was just sitting on the rock reflecting and it poked its head out of the water and just, we stared at each other for 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, so this, I mean, animals communicate with us all the time. And, you know, when I go on shamanic journey, you know, my, some of my pets show up, you know, like the first day that I, I purchased a snake, that's what, what my gift was to myself last year. All of a sudden she's got her own Mer Merkaba and we're traveling the, the galaxy together. And she, it's, you know, it's, it's just really cool. You know, I mean, uh, animals are so cool, especially those that we really resonate with or that they resonate with us, you know? Yeah. Well, and it doesn't even have to be psychic communication, right? It can be physical communication, right? So we went to Costa Rica a couple of years ago and I was up at four in the morning and the frogs were, were singing. The frogs were out there. And I sang with the frogs and I actually have a TikTok, and I'll link to it. I have a TikTok of me singing with the frogs at four o'clock in the morning and we synced up and it was really cool. Right. But it was just physical communication with nature. So it doesn't all have to be psychic, but if you learn how to do this well and you get agreements with the animals, you can do things like fly with the birds. You can send a part of your, your consciousness to a bird and, and they can fly and take you places, right? They, there's ways to do that. There's, you could swim, literally swim with the dolphins, although dolphins are a little harder to, to tap into psychic. Whales are easier, but you can swim with the whales, right? And, you know, all of the things. So, you know, you know the question that Weiwei sent in was specifically about communicating with fur babies who had passed over. And so, I do want to say that there's slightly different types of communication for fur babies that have passed over versus fur babies that are here. So for communicating here, you're literally opening your third eye and just having a conversation with them, right? The, <clears throat> when you are, the, the conversation, so here's, here's the way people are like, oh, well, how do I know if I'm making it up? Right? Because that's always the first question is how do I know if I'm making it up? You cannot be surprised by something that you are making up. And I promise you, if you ask your animals something like what is the nature of the universe or why did you choose me for your family or, you know, all these things, you will get an answer that surprises you. And then you will know that you are not making this up because you cannot surprise yourself. Right. So that's, that's number one. And so, you know, we all actually can talk to our animals. We just don't know it. And so it's just simply, I, I see this all the time on TikTok where, where people are putting words to, to their animals. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what that animal is saying. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I have conversations oh, yeah. with my dog all the time. I'm like, hey, you know, what do you think about this, buddy? And, you know, like we've developed a system to where he can show me in the physical. You know, like if, if I can't necessarily hear him or see what he's trying to communicate, he'll just give me a wink. Like right at the right at the funniest time, he's like, ha. He's like I, I, I hear you. You're like, we're, we're connected. Uh, so, you know, it's it's awesome. You know, one of the one of the things I'd add to what you just said is, you know, if you're thinking that your animal's communicating with you, even from the, you know, the, the next phase of existence, I would say they probably are. And to, to trust your intuition. I mean, that's really what's coming through for Weiwei. You know, as, as we've been getting into the energy of this, it's like you, you already know what they're saying. <laughs> you know, like you, you, you wouldn't have reached out if you didn't already know. You, you have a knowing about this. And, you know, this is your confirmation about that. So spirit can leave me alone now because that's what they wanted me to say. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, when you're talking to animals on the other side, right, you're going to be going out through the crown chakra. So in, in the, in the physical, you're doing the third eye in the, it, when they've crossed over, it's a crown chakra thing. So that's mediumship is what you're doing, right? Because anytime you're talking to somebody who has crossed into the astral, that's, that's mediumship. 
And so, you know, then you're, you're going up through your crown chakra to have the conversation. So it's just a different way of accessing it, but it's the same conversation, right? And animals, oh my God, animal, especially dogs, dogs in particular will just, they, they just hang with you, you know, <laughs> just hang out with you. They're, they're, I truly believe that dogs are the step before angel for the experience, right? Because they're just, love bugs right so, some of them the, some, well i mean unless they've been trained to not be right that's usually oh, the case um, i was a maintenance technician for many years and i'll tell you i love dogs there's certain breeds i'm not sure they're a step before angel <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll give you that yeah 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 there's some meat for out there <laughs> but yeah the, anyway, the, the upshot though, is that when you're talking to your, your animals, you, you want to just pick the right path for that and then, you know, trust what the answer is and then see if they respond accordingly. Right. So the, uh, there are some other places I want to talk about one other piece, which is the difference between an animal you can talk to and a familiar. Okay. So in Wicca, there is this concept of a familiar and the familiar is an animal that is bonded to you in, in a magical way. Okay. And familiars actually are out in front. They're your protectors. And so if an attack comes through, it hits your familiar first and then you. So, you know, you need to be careful about that and make sure that you're protecting yourself and your familiar when you do that. So, and then familiars actually participate in the magic. Now cats tend to make better familiars than dogs just because their energy is a little more focused, but you can have a familiar as anything. I mean, the, what you were describing with going out into the Merkaba with your snake, that's totally a familiar thing, right? That is not something you would do with a regular, just animal, right? So you know, these are the sorts of things that can happen as you go on journeys with them. And your cats, cats are really attuned to energy. They like to be in the middle of the energy. They will sometimes be disruptive to the energy if you let them. So be careful. They have their own agendas. Um, but yeah, the, that's one of the other pieces that you need to be aware of if you're working in the energetic world and you have animals is you need to make sure that whatever protections you put on your house, whatever protections you put on yourself, don't impact your animals or do protect your animals, right? And that the energetics that you're putting in place in your environment are actually conducive to your animal's well-being as well. Uh, these are all things to take into account as you're doing your work around the animal world, okay? So how do we talk to our animals? How do we do anything in, in the energetic world? How do we do it? Is it that, that big I, capital I word? It intention. Is big, word. Yes. <laughs> it is intention. Yeah, yeah. They, we always make it harder than we than it needs to be. Magic and energy work is all about intention. So, what you intend is what you create, right? <laughs> so, choose wisely, right? We talk about this at the end of every episode. So, the intention is how we do this, and then how do you get better at it? Is practice, 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 right? You just you have to work the muscle enough to be able to, to do it effectively. And so every animal you come into contact with, just try and talk to them. Right. And this, and you'll learn that different animals have different frequencies. So like a horse has a very different frequency than a bird and then a dog or a cat dogs and cats have very different frequencies too. Right. So you'll notice that they have different energies to them and that there are consistent energies across species, but each individual animal has its own frequency as well, right? This is one of those things that, that I talked about, oh my God, so many years ago on Spirit Sherpa, there's this idea of everyone has an energy signature, right? And so each person, each animal has their own energy signature, which is their unique uh, vibrational combo frequency thing, right? And if you are, if you, let's say you've lost your cat or you've lost your dog and you're trying to find them, you can, if you know their frequency, you can just open up and just reach out across the area 
and find the frequency <laughs> of your animal and then follow that to where they are. Right. I got an interesting story that. about that. You know, I, I, I never thought about opening up my frequency to it. So we had a, a baby chicken at the time. Right. And we had just moved them and integrated them to the outdoors. And it was a little bit smaller than the rest of the ones in there. And what happened is the coop door slammed shut, you know, and it, and it just wandered off scared because it, it was not used to these loud noises. And we looked for it for like three hours. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, like uh, the, the, the realist in me is like, I don't know, it's probably gone, you know, and then, you know, it's getting dark and the kids come out I'm like, Josh, aren't you going to do something? I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I, <laughs> I gotta get back out there. So I actually had my dousing rods. Right. And I'm like, I was like, all right, guys. I was like, you know, where, where is this chicken? Where, where is it? And it, you know, pointed me right to it found it, found it within three minutes of, of tapping into spirit in a, in a certain and traditional or different way, but uh, opening up the frequency. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. And just, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. So that can work. I remember being in Richmond and I was out walking and this large standard poodle comes screaming out of a alley at me, barking very, you know, very angrily. Like I was like, I am going to get bit. Right. And I'm just, and I just looked at it and went, no, <laughs> bang. Right. Hit, hit it with an energy field. It was like, no. And it kept barking at me, but it stopped in its tracks and it kept barking. And I just held the no and I kept held eye contact and its owner came running out behind me going, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, he got away and I, I'm surprised he didn't bite you. And I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like, so I stayed very calm and I was like, nope, I'm not having this experience today. Thank you very much. And he came and collected the dog. But I had this thing with the dog where I'm like, no, we're not doing this. We are not doing this. And, you know, back in the day when I used to sell houses back, you know, in the nineties and there, I walked into a house and the dog was growling, you know, not happy, whatever. But the, the listing sheet said what the dog's name was. And I was like, oh, well the dog must supposed to be supposed to be here. So my, it should be okay. But this dog is not happy. And so I sat on the couch and I cooed and petted the dog. And I told the person, walk slowly, go see the house, see what you need. I'm going to take care of this dog. It's not happy about something and it'll be fine. And, and I'm just sending these loving vibes to the dog. And the dog is tolerating me, not happy, but tolerating me. And the owners come home and go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm surprised he didn't bite you. And I'm like, what? So, you know, all of these things, right? But I just kept sending the dog these loving vibes. It's like, it's okay. We're fine. You're okay. Everything's good. We're supposed to be here. It's fine. Right? So, you know, that was probably stupid. I should have not come in the door, but <laughs> I was in my twenties. So, you know, what do you, what do you think? Right? Anyway, but these are sorts of things that, that can work when you're dealing with animals is animals are also high feelers. So as empaths, our empathic abilities are very impactful on the animals around us. And, you know, they're high vibe uh, feeling. And so like my dog, when we lived in Richmond, which was high stress area, when we got the dog, it was, it was middle of the pandemic. We got him in October of 2020. He was, he had been, left on the streets. He'd been wandering the streets for two weeks. He was emaciated. They had found him and brought him in and they just started to get him food. And, you know, he was still, you could see his bones when we, when we got him and, and he was stressed and we were stressed. I mean, Jeff had had to take a month off of work earlier that year because he worked in customer service in a financial services thing. So we heard all these horror stories about people's lives falling apart. And it's just, he was, he was miserable. And, and, you know, just being locked away and having to wipe everything down and the stress and then black lives matter had exploded. And so we had even more stress because we were in the capital of Confederacy. And so all we had a lot of extra stuff for that. And, you know, all of the stress had locked in. Right. And so when our dog arrived, he was picking up on all that stress and then just the, 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 the political upheaval and everybody hating each other and all of that stuff. Well, he had what was known as boxer colitis when we got him. And we had to have him on special food and all sorts of stuff. We moved to Panama. He never needed special food again. The stress just melted away. 
he was not being impacted by that stress, even though he got stuck in Panama City when we first got here because of the protests and everything. And he had injured himself because he had scratched so much because of the heat. And so, you know, he, he arrived in the cone of shame, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, there was all that stuff, but he has never had a problem with his boxer colitis since because it was a stress response for him. And he is not stressed here. He's bored, but he's not stressed. <laughs> He tells me all the time. He's like, you guys are boring. You need to do more. We need more. I'm like, I'll get you another dog. He's like, no, you're my only, you're my humans that I don't share, you know, so, but, but, you know, there's no stress. And so the stress factor can be an impact on your animals as well. Your stress factor impacts them as much as the environmental stress factors, right? So you need to be aware that your animals may be reflecting your stress too because you're an empath and you're sharing your energy with them. And so be aware that if they start to ask, act erratic and you're stressed, that, that those are related, right? Did you have something? You looked like you wanted to say something. You know, there's been, I've had a lot of interesting animal occurrences. And, you know, it's so funny being tapped in, as you would say, to the gestalt of this podcast. I have so many things manifest into my life that are just topics of discussion here. So about a uh, was about three weeks ago now, you know, I noticed a, an oral hematoma on our cat, right? Like it's like an inside the ear blood blister can come from mites or just scratching excessively. And, you know, you know me, I'm a little hard headed. Most of your people are. And so, you know, like the, the message was coming through is that I wasn't listening, right? Like I wasn't listening, but it, it, it got so much deeper than that. Cause not long after that, Guess who got shot in the ear? I'm not even going to reference the name, but you know, we have a, a prominent figure get shot in the ear. And then yesterday, as I'm going to meet one of my friends, same ear, big ass, big ass bruise on. I'm like, what's going on with your ears? Like my dog bit me. And I'm like, what's going on with all that? I was like, and it's, it's all different confirmations of, uh, you know, a, a similar lesson. And it's, and that, that cat is also a familiar link to somebody I know. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. And the cat came into my dreams and it showed the hematoma bursting, right? Like it, it showed the bursting and the letting go of, of, of that. So, you know, it, it I, I love animal communication. I'm always going to reference Ted Andrews here. I mean, even, even though he's working with totems, there is so much more in that book, Animal Speak. And when you can connect with the energy of what is going on there and the people that have read that, and there's just, uh, that is probably one of my most, uh, you know, absolute favorite books that I have ever, ever referenced. And I, it's my go-to guy. I actually have the pocket edition. So, you know, it's a fantastic book. Read, read that book. Yeah, absolutely true. And we will link to that in the show notes as well, because fantastic book, fantastic. Uh, he really gets the, the animals. He really gets it. So, all right. So anything else you want to say about spirit, you know, talking with your animals? Intend it and trust your intuition. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And with that, we will call this episode complete. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget that what you focus on is what expands, what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,